Hey, 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 what's up, everyone? It's your girl, Sherelle. I'm the host of Let's Talk, the show, and this ain't a podcast. I want to thank you guys for tuning in with me this Tuesday, like you guys do every Tuesday. We have an amazing show in store for you. I got uh, my good friend, Shy, host of the Shy vs. Everybody podcast, joining us today. He's our special guest, um, and we're going to talk about fatherhood, why he started podcasting, um, and doing business with family. So, I'm going to let you guys just file on in, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, you guys know the routine. Before we get the episode started, you got to drop something in my... You got to drop what you're grateful for in my comment section. So, tell me something that you're grateful for. Um, I am grateful today. What am I grateful for? What are you grateful for today? Today, I'm grateful for the opportunity to just do better. Hey, Shy just joined the talk show. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, drop in my comment section something that you're grateful for. I'm just grateful for the opportunity to do better. That's my eyes. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Let's get Shy on here, y'all. Let's see. Y'all, I am exhausted. I'm not going to lie. I'm tired. Not sleepy, tired, just like. What's up? What's up? <laughs> What's going on? What's up? Not much, not much. I was almost a little late. I was eating a burger. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me, girl? Yeah, I can hear you in the car. Why are you not in the house? I would love to be in the house right now, but when you got a six month old baby, you never know. That is very true. So I, I don't want to disrespect your platform. <laughs> And be telling my kids to be quiet every five seconds. <laughs> All right, I can dig that. I yeah, appreciate actually, it. Actually, they gone right now. They be back in a minute, so I didn't want them to interrupt and mess me all up. I can dig it. All right, so the ritual is when you join, you got to give me something that you're grateful for. Uh, I'm I'm grateful for my mom, even though she passed away. I'm grateful because I feel like everything she instilled in me. Is what led is what lead me to be successful right now. So like, whenever I think about like you know saying quitting, giving up, I think about her because she was a single parent. You know, what I'm saying catching the bus. So whenever she, whenever she was doing that, I look at my own situation like I can't be crying over no bullshit. So you know, we can cuss on your show. You say what? Can we cuss? Hell no, you can cuss on my show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so whenever I want to cry about some junk, I just think about the stuff that she did. And I, I get over that shit, man. Man up. I like it. I mm -hmm. like it. All right. So first off, What's we've up? been trying to do this for a minute. And I was purposely trying to, I was trying to do it before the anniversary of me being on your show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we've hit, it's past that anniversary now, because I think oh. it was like the week of the, like the 11th or something. Yeah, but it aired, actually it aired like, the what's today's date that like the 15th so it's only like three days oh, okay cool so then yeah so yeah. yeah 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 for sure it was a long time coming i know right yeah okay, for sure so can you still count on um one hand or two hands how many shows you've been a guest on or have, or have they gone up uh no because some people like to make false promises so um let me see one that think this this would be my fifth show Oh shit, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, cause my goal at the beginning of the year was to be on, get interviewed by three people, and you are the fourth. Hey, you beat yeah. the goal. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You beat the first off, shot. You so fucking consistent, though. Man, gotta be. I'm, you I'm actually, I'm actually scared not to be. You are consistent. If I don't see shit, I know I'm gonna see a clip from your show. I know I'm gonna see one of them. Got to, got to, man. I try, I try. It's hard, but. It's hard when you depend on guests, but I've been I've been making it work. Real thing. I'm so happy. All right, so I really don't I've been kind of just getting away from really like formal interviews and really just trying to stick to just having conversations and letting things flow organically. But yeah. I still want to show the same respect that you showed me by doing some research on you. So sure. Oh she did research on me. That's what good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, you got to. That's how I feel. I feel so honored when you did. I'm like, damn, he was he did some work. I'm like, okay, I feel so honored. Yes. So let me make sure I got the date right. I want to make okay. sure I got it right. 729-19. Okay. What date is that to you? And what does it mean to you? 
That's the uh, that's the first episode. What? That was, uh, so listen, shout out to uh, Q, my uncle slash producer. He been doing this for ages. Like I'm talking about, I don't even think it was called podcasting. <laughs> so he tried to get me to do it, but I, I was always scared to do it. So I didn't want to really do it for real because I didn't think nobody would like it. So uh, on that particular day, leading up to that, I was supposed to do a podcast with my cousin and his friend. It was going to be the three of us talking about weekly topics. But they was always on bull crap, always playing around, never wanted to be committed, didn't want to do it. So I, it was a Friday. I asked him, like, come on, let's go do a show over Q Crib. And he was like, no, I'm good. So I called Q, like, hey, man, I got somebody I'm going to bring on the show to interview. we be there Saturday at 12 o'clock. He like, yeah, whatever, dog. And I called my boy Sean up. We went over there, and it's been cracking ever since. I see that. All right, so. But, what? but, real quick, the funny thing about it, the first six or seven episodes, I tried not to do. What you mean? I tried to make excuses not to do the shows. Why? I, I didn't want to, I just wasn't comfortable. Well, like, what I, was uncomfortable about that? I just was like. I didn't think nobody really rock with it. Nobody would watch it. I had any followers, no views. So every Sunday we do a show. I'll try to think of an excuse I can make to not do a show. <laughs> like people don't even, like the first seven episodes, it was like that. And so why you keep going then? If nobody fucking with you, why you keep going? Cause after a while, I'm like, man, I'm listening. I'm listening to other people's shows. I'm like, I'm I'm doing something real good. Like I'm researching. We talking. And I'm getting a good, you know, I'm getting good feedback from people I know and the people that's coming on the show. So I'm like, hey, this is something I could do. Because I've always been messing with podcasts, you know, for like the last eight, nine years listening to other people's shows. And I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm better than most people. <laughs> I can't even, I can't even lie. I feel like I'm better than a lot of people who do this. It'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm a whole lot better. You you got you think you ballsy enough to tell us who you think you better than or people you think overhyped? In the city? Yeah. Uh let me see, podcast. You you got a TV show, so you got a show. <laughs> Yours the show. Yours the show. So you 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 on a different level. Yours are, yours are whole different. Yeah, yours can get picked up easy by a network, like for real. Uh, but as far as podcasting. Who you think yeah, overhyped? No. It ain't that good. <laughs> I don't put no names out there because I just got finished talking. But yeah, I say it like this: everybody, everybody favorite podcaster in the city, I'm better than. Like wow. they got, they got a big platform. They got all the rappers who come to their show. Oh yeah. But I, look, but I look on their show and it's trash. Why? Why are you better than them? What makes you better? Because all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this. Like I had, I had, I did a show earlier today, right? Mm -hmm. I saw that. So. I surprised them because when I was doing research, I don't only do research on the artists as far as their music. I actually listen to their songs and break down the songs. So I got this one segment called Talk About the Bars. So if I listen to a bar that I really like and I feel like it resonates with me, I bring that up in the interview. And then kind of throw them off like, dang, you, you know that, that line or you know that song? So that's why I feel like I'm better than a lot of people because I actually do the research and don't just bring somebody in because they got a name or a hot song. Yeah. And I'm going off for that because it's going to make the conversation flow easy if I can really tap into their music for real. Yeah. So, yeah, but then just like a lot of people sound generic too. Like everything, you know, just I like things to flow because I used to like watching like Rap City in the Basement. I like 106 in Park. Uh, oh, Rap City in the Basement. What, what, then they used to rap in the uh, booth. In the, or like yeah, in the yeah. Or yeah. Yeah, I remember that. So those was like, I felt like when I was watching those shows, like they were just chilling. It wasn't no script or nothing. Yeah, it was organic. It was real natural. But still keep it professional and don't be like, it got to be a balance of both. Yeah. yeah I, just, I just feel like where our show, everybody who come on, including yourself, they have a good time. They do. <laughs> that was yeah. including yourself. I mean, it was all right, yo. I ain't gonna, it was all right. <laughs> you know what I remember about your show? is when I hit you up, you went to Milwaukee and you forgot the time. Bro, yes. I I just told somebody else that. That and I felt so bad. And I I felt like I'm like maybe I'm tripping. I literally got up. I'm like something don't feel right. It is the yeah. something was off. And I'm like, well, time looks straight. I'm on my way to him. 
Yeah. Like, and I think you call me or something. Like, you come and I'm like, yeah, nigga. Like, what you yeah. talking about? <laughs> like, yeah, you was talking cool. about? It was cool though. It was real. It was real good. It was real good. Yeah, though. I have fun. I definitely yeah. have. Fun. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was I ain't gonna throw no names out there, but yeah, a lot of people they 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 ain't doing it for the right reasons. They just doing it just because they feel like it's the thing to do. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. I know what you're talking about. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. What was I about to say? So hold on. So then we're gonna keep we're gonna keep it on your first episode. Um, my man's told you don't rap no more. You think you said your cousin uncle or somebody uncle told you don't do that shit no more? Oh yeah, yeah, my cousin. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, first yeah. time you wrote. Yeah. Why you yeah. write again then? Huh? Why you write again? Why you start writing again? Uh, I got I got a problem, right? I got mm -hmm. a problem. I'm I'm very competitive. So normally, if it's something I don't like for real, and you say I'm trash, I quit. But at the time, I like music. Like I was really feeling rap, and I thought that would be my I thought that would be my only way to be to be rich and take care of my son. Because at the time, I'm 19. I got a baby on the way. So I'm thinking the closest thing for me to get rich is being a rapper. So I'm right. like, forget it. So we go to we go to my man's um uncle house. He a DJ. We about to go to the showcase. So prior to going to the showcase, he like, rap to me what y'all gonna rap at the showcase. I'm like, all right, bet. We've been in a room, we've been going over this all day in my mama house. <laughs> so we rap over the game. The game got a song called This Is How We Do. Yeah. You know, I know that so we rapping over that beat, and I'm looking like, damn, he ain't feeling this. So afterwards, we like, how we do? He like, man, that shit was ass. I'm like, I'm like, damn, like, you ain't keep. Now he kept it real, but I like that. Like, I want somebody to keep it real with me when it comes to anything that I do, because if you coming from a good place and not just hating, then I'm gonna take your criticism and and go ahead and uh and work it out. Like so that. I can't. We and then we can't bet. With some more music, and he like, man, y'all, y'all real good now. See, look at that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I just gotta prove a point. Like, I always gotta feel like I gotta prove a point. You know, what I'm saying, make sure people know, like, all right, we're trying doing this thing. I can dig it. I like this. I like this. I say, just in this little moment, I'm like, I'm just learning more about you and seeing more of your character. Like, I only know a little bit just from interactions with you on social media and what was out there at your place for like an hour or so. But it's, yeah. it's, it's dope to sit here and just see like it's different layers to you. For sure. Like, for at sure. first I'm like, man, this thing is just goofy all the time. I definitely no. still think you goofy as fuck. Oh no. But I was as, just... <laughs> as my wife and my kids, I, I get on their nerves all day. I believe like, you. I've been like this since I was since I was a kid. Like I'm always I've always been a goof boy in school, like everywhere. I can dig it. I can tell. But I can also see that there is a level to you that takes what you do very seriously and you put oh, yeah. that energy and that effort. And I and I give you that because it shows up in your work. You're fucking consistent as fuck. For sure. Appreciate you it. You can't beat that shit. You just oh, can't. Yeah. You, even if you go in the wrong fucking way, eventually you can go the right way as, as long as your ass keeps going. So, oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Can dig oh, yeah. It. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What you have to say? No, no. I was, I was just agreeing with you on, on, on your kind words to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I see him. All right, so I wanna. I feel like it's so generic. I be want to talk about other shit, but how did podcasting change your life? Like, what have you learned about yourself throughout this process? That I can, I learned that I can communicate with anybody, no matter what you do. If you, Ooh. like, I ain't had like I, I don't want my podcast to be just a rap podcast. I had like business owners. Um, this girl named Autumn Kyle, she had a business called Detroit Doe, and now she's starting a um thing called. I, I don't want to say her the name of her business wrong, but she ventured off to something else that's basically helping jumpstart different businesses or whatever. Mm -hmm. So she's doing that now. So I had her on the show. I had a basketball coach on the show, and I knew that he wasn't going to be – I knew that he was going to bring a lot of young eyes. So on that show, I'm like, all right, I can't cuss. So that so I made sure, I, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm just talking, not cussing, not saying a whole bunch of niggas this, nigga that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, it helped me. It helped me realize that I could talk to anybody, like, no matter if you're a rapper, if you, you know, got a high position, low position, like, I can have a conversation pretty much with anybody. And I just tell my wife this the other day, like, it brought, like, new friendships, like, me and you got cool, we talk on social media. Yeah. Um, A couple of uh rap dudes I got cool with, shout out to Detroit Diamond, like, I really like her and her grind and stuff like that, like, I made friendships with people through the podcast, so that's cool. Yeah. Too. What was, damn. 
forgive me because I just had a whole question. I went, okay, so wait, you did you not think you could talk to people outside of your podcast, or did you not think you could hold those type of conversations before the podcast? I knew I could hold those conversations, but I didn't know if I could hold it as far as like making it entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Like, like just holding the conversation, keeping, keeping up with them because I ain't gonna lie. You know, sometimes I'll be a little intimidated about. You know, I ain't going to college. I went to college for two for for a month. <laughs> <laughs> No. Did you even get a refund check? Like, did you stay I, I did. I did. I did. I went to uh, Macomb College for a month. Um, in school, my grades was, was decent. You know, once I stopped playing basketball, that was my motivation to keep my grades up. Once I stopped hooping, it was like, all right, the grades went down because I, I didn't have nothing to look at. Like, all right, if I my grades high, I get the hoop. You know what right. I'm saying? So me not hooping no more, it's like, all right, the grades, whatever. You know, I was taking – school serious and I regret that now. That's why I be on my son right now as far as like grades and stuff. So in a way I was kind of intimidated like I'm bringing like Autumn for instance she once she got a, a master's degree she got you know what I'm saying she she's smart as hell so I'm like damn and will I be able to keep her engaged into my into my life into my situation and once I seen that I could I'm like damn I can talk to anybody like it is what it is. Do you think that's like, are you old? I feel like that's a really honest comment to make. That's honest as hell to be like, it's a little intimidating sometimes when I don't, yeah. if I feel like I'm not at a level with something, just to yeah. hold a conversation with somebody. For sure. You know, why did you feel, I don't say why you feel comfortable, but where did this vulnerability come from? How did, how, who helped you get to that point to be that honest with yourself? Or were you just always that honest with yourself? Man, my, my mom said, my mama told me, if you, if you, a liar is somebody that's scared. You feel me? So I got to keep it real with myself. Like, you know, in a relationship with life, with your kids, like, and sometimes you can't afford shit. You got to tell your kids, like, listen, your birthday going to be rough this year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Christmas ain't going to be like Look at Slim. Year. You know, Look at yeah, Slim. For real. So you just got to be honest with yourself, like, is, and ask questions. Like, my uncle, I always go back to him, man. Like, he is the smartest hood dude I know. <laughs> like, He's super smart, but super hood at the same time. So whenever I got a question about anything, whenever I need some help with something, or I go to him because like he know everything. He know every damn thing. So like I, I'm not scared to ask questions. I'm not scared to you know what I'm saying get help because shit. How else are we gonna improve and advance in life? I can dig it. And that, that was my problem in high school. I was too scared to ask for help, and when I needed it, my grades just just fell to the ground because I was too scared to ask for that help. So what? So at what point do you not be scared? Like, what happened to you that you was like, all right, I'm about to start asking questions? Shit, life. You feel me? Like being a parent, like you gotta know things. You gotta, you gotta get right with the pot. I coach basketball, so yeah, I, I, I gotta talk to other coaches who who been doing it for a while and learn from them. Podcasting, like I said, my uncle been doing it, so I'm asking him questions on different things, like how should I structure questions? How should I break down things and stuff like that? So you know, even my wife, I. My wife is smart as hell. Like, I feel like she, she book smart, I'm street smart. So we just put that shit together. You know what I'm saying? I like that. And I'm not scared to ask, like, hey, man, how you spell this shit? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not worried about that shit. Like, no, no, you, can't be, you can't be worried about what somebody going to, how somebody going to feel about you or, or how they going to be like, all right, well, this nigga don't know this or he don't know that. And I'm not worried about none of that. I like that. It is what it is. And if you're going to judge me off that, then, like, that's saying something about you because I'm quite sure it's something that you don't know. It's something that I know that I can teach you. So it's like, at the end of the day, we can all learn from each other, and you're never too old to learn some shit. Hell yeah. I like that. Yeah, I like right. that. Yeah. You got to remain teachable. So I, I'll say this. You credit your uncle. You credit your mom. And you always credit your wife. What Those seem like top three most influential people. I'm not, And I ain't going to lie. I'm going to put your son in there as well because you credit oh, no, no. Your my son is the, my. And see, I, I, if my wife, when she sees this, I don't want her to feel like I'm putting him above my other kids. But real quick, I'm a, I don't want to stay on nothing too long because I know you might got some other questions. But my oldest son, of course, me and his mom, high school sweethearts, we think we're going to be together. So right. I another challenge, having a son. That's a challenge for me. So I'm like, I got to prove everybody wrong because, you know, I'm 19, 20. They're going to think I'm going to fail at being a father. So with my son, the reason why I'm so overprotective over him and the reason why I feel like he helped me grow in life because, you know, it would just, I basically it was just me and him. My mom passed away when he was young. So that's, and my dad been passed away when I was 13. So no grandparents on either side, on my mom's, on his mom's side or his dad's side. 
Right. So it's like the lack of the lack of uh, people around them made me overprotective over him because you know, I feel like in a in a way I'm like the me and his mom is the only people he got for real. Right. So with him, I I, I, I credit him on everything because it helped me smarten up. I was just thinking about myself and shit. You got another life that you gotta look out for. So with him coming into the world, it's like all right, it ain't about me. Shit, it's all about him. I gotta make sure everything I do is right. If I gotta wear some bullshit shoes for him to look fresh, then that's how it's gonna be. I can dig it. So you, I know you said that your dad died really early. Mm -hmm. So who who really taught you how to be a dad, or was your dad present in your life that you know influenced you, and now you were able to be that to your son? My dad passed away when uh, twenty one years, June thirteenth. Okay. So I found out my dad passed away on my way to uh, my graduation rehearsal from eighth grade. Wow. So I'm like, damn, mom, you couldn't wait to tell me afterwards? Like, <laughs> my nigga, <laughs> the time. Yeah, so my dad, the thing that I took from my dad, because like I say, I don't remember too much because like that was 21 years ago. But the thing I remember is his, is his grind. Even though it was illegal, <laughs> but he made, he made it work. So like whenever we needed food, whenever we needed bills paid, no matter if it was legal or illegal, He'll make a way. So that's the thing I got for him. Like, no matter what, I'm going to make a way for my family. And as far as, like, other influences, like, I got a credit, like, my Uncle Tony. That's my uh, mom, uh, youngest brother, but he older than my Uncle Q. So Q, Tone, my brother Jamal, he's nine years older. And just, like, older guys in the neighborhood. I like that. Like, I'm the type of person, if I see you fuck up, I know what not to do. So when I'm seeing the older dudes doing crazy shit in the neighborhood, like, all right. I know I'm not doing that shit. I'm good. You feel me? So, I like, but like, like Q, he went to college. Jamal went to college. Like, you know, saying I look at these dudes, they positive dudes in my life. So it's like, all right, that's how I should be as far as carrying myself. Like, I know my street shit from Q. I know my my family shit, from my brother Jamal, because he got family and stuff. He been married since he was 22, and he's 42. Oh. So I got, like I said, it's a balance of both. It's a so. Obviously, God don't send kids down here with manuals. I wish he would sometimes. I wish he would <laughs> send us a fucking kid For sure. and a manual to go with it. Because that you literally, literally, your first kid is trial and error. You be fucking up. You don't know what the fuck you doing. Man. And then I feel like the next time you have a kid, you like I got this shit. I can. Do yeah, because yeah, the second one easy hell. <laughs> For real. That first one, you just be fumbling that bitch. You be like, fuck it, we'll figure it out. But, I was definitely fumbling the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but who? Who was like, where did you where did you pull your strength to be a dad? Who taught you how to be a dad? Who taught you how to love your son and you know, like yeah. uh, see, my mom. My mama did. Like, like she my mom keep it real. My mom wasn't a regular woman. She was a she had some dude in there, like <laughs> like for real. So my mom basically like like she she told me like you gotta sacrifice to be a, a good parent. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? You gotta sacrifice. It's gonna be some times that you might not be able to do this. But the one thing I can say was I was able to still be kind of a, a young kid and still be a dad. Like, I was still going out partying. You know what I'm saying? I take care of my business with my kid all day. And at night, hey, mom, um, can Sean come over tonight? You know what I'm saying? So it's like my mom was the person who kind of, like, molded me to be a, a man. I know they say a lot of times a woman, and it's true, a woman can't completely teach a man how to be a man. Because, like I say, I got my uncles, I got my brothers. So they teaching me that male aspect. But my mom was teaching me, like, how to take care of business, uh, not making excuses, and just putting your kids before you. I like that. Somebody, somebody quoted you, said my mom wasn't a regular woman. Love she it. wasn't. She wasn't. <laughs> like, my mom was five foot one, 110 pounds, but would kick your ass. <laughs> I like a real nigga. I like mm -hmm. your mama. Like For that. sure. For sure. I like that. So, you know what? Speaking of women... Teaching I, men. How I, I knew it's, I knew this was coming. We go. So you had some comments on your show. Um, I'm not sure how long ago this show was about yeah. a woman needs to let a man be a man and do manly things. Yes, yes, yes. Now let me. What the let fuck does that mean, y'all? Let me manly let, thing. I know you got women on your on your on your show who watch and stuff. So <laughs> I, I don't want them to think I'm I'm female bashing. <laughs> This my I, don't, thing. I don't really believe in that type of stuff, but go ahead. This is my thing. When I say a woman got to let a man be a man, I just say as far as, like, 
decisions. Now, at the end of the day, both parents make decisions and stuff like that. But especially, I say, when you're having a son, what do you say? <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So my thing is this. When you when you having a son, it's some things that, like I told you, my mom was tough, but it was some things she couldn't teach me that, you know what I'm saying, I had to I had to learn from a, from a guy. So when I say let a man be a man, a lot of times in these relationships, I was saying that as far as, like, just when you co-parent, when you parent, some t some situations you just gotta let the man be the man. I know situations personal that a woman uh, getting a situation with a dude have a kid. Once they have a kid, now the dude can't have shit to do with the son because you don't trust that person or you don't believe he's a good enough father. But he was a good enough father to lay in bed with you and have his kid. So my thing is like at the end of the day, just because you're not in a relationship with him, don't mean you gotta take his man privilege away. He's still a man in that kid life. He's still that kid dad. So you can't just take that away because the two of y'all aren't on on the right terms. And then even in the household, as being the man, I feel like a lot of times women want to be so equal to the man, which is cool. But in, in some situations, that stop a man from being a man. Like at the end of the day, a man gotta make some decisions for the family because we taking care of everything. So give me that give me that responsibility to be able to handle my my family. Trust me that as a man, I can handle my family. And if you trust me, everything gonna go good. But if you kind of questioning things and saying like it should go this way, it's kind of like you got you got lack you lacking trust in me. Or you all right all right all right. But as a woman, we need y'all because sometimes okay. we gonna we gonna make dumb mistakes. We gonna need a woman to be by our side. You need that. And sometimes a woman got to fake it. Even if a woman know, well, he talking some bullshit, but I'm going to support him. <laughs> it's, it, it's like that. It's like that. And for the most part, we are dumb. We need women. Without women, we, are, we aren't we shit. But you got to kind of like feed our ego. Even if it's like, even if you know we on bullshit, believe in me. But in the back of your mind, you might have to do some shit behind my back, but believe in me and make me feel like a man. You feel me? When you when you once you make me not feel like a man, it's like, what the fuck? And lip service Sherelle, she on here and whatever. But yeah, I just need your support. I just need you to have my back. And that alone is you letting me be a man because you got my back. And if you give it the right dude or the right woman, you'll kinda you know, you'll kinda get that like I know my my, my wife is, is smart enough, strong enough to make decisions, but at the end of the day she need me as a man to lead. Hey. All right, so I'm gonna say this because you said a lot. Um, I agree with the not allowing a man to be active in a child's life just because y'all not together. Yeah, for sure. Um, I but I I will say this. I think that black men have a tendency to do to always think. I think their way. I, I'm gonna say this. Joke, I think black men's way of parenting their children, especially boys, is tough love, and yeah. I find it so ironic that y'all become men, because I'm seeing more men do this, complain about not being able to express themselves, yet you teach these toxic behaviors to your son. That's my issue with that. And I don't think that is, you know, you're trying to take away your, you know, that father's right to his child or certain situations. I think it's more so like, I don't trust your judgment on a lot yeah. of things. And yeah. I think that's the thing. And see, and so, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Maybe out of time, but I'm just gonna get a pillow or so. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, so I agree you should not be revoking access to the child if you're not together. That shit lame, that shit corny, and yes. your son, your kid gonna probably hate your ass when they get older. I'm but sorry. I do think a lot of times, like like we said before we was having a conversation, men's the way y'all gauge harm is so fucking low. Like y'all let kids do crazy shit. See, that's why you got <laughs> trust me. Be like, don't let them do that. Like y'all get y'all level of of uh, like safety is so low it's like my nigga <laughs> it hurt okay, and, and that's when that's when you gotta like know when you with me like for <sighs> if you fall you fall get up now it's okay now the one thing i say we had to change is like saying somebody soft for crying because you hurt see i'm crying man i'm hurt god damn it <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm but i'm hurt but my thing is like of course you're gonna get you know when, when me growing up me me remembering my mom and dad like i know being with my dad if i fail he about to get your ass up and with my mom, if I fail, she gonna hold me and pet me and hug me and shit. Yeah, because why not? But see, and that's the gender roles. But I just feel like 
y'all feel like all the soft stuff has to be for women and it don't have to be. No, but my thing can be gentle. You can be like, you don't have to call it baby and your son just to acknowledge how he feel. You yeah. don't have to be like, I'm baby and my son. If he fall and hurt himself, don't tell him, get up. Like, you know what? I feel you, son. Sometimes shit hurt. But yeah. you good. Let's keep it moving. Like, I just feel like sometimes black fathers feel like any type of emotion to their sons is going to make them soft. And it's like, what you want to make them tough for? So you can get shot? Like, no, see, my thing is, I just want to make him tough just so he can, once he getting, because I, I, I got to tell my kids, Real life and basketball is like the same. When you playing basketball, I'll be like, you can't, you can't be, you can't be, you can't be soft. It's okay to, to you know, saying have emotions and stuff like that. But my thing is like in this world, people is going to treat you a certain way. You can't, you you gotta be tough because you're gonna face, you're gonna face a lot of hard shit that come from, from from your job, from from white people being, you know, saying we African American males and stuff like that. So you gotta be, you gotta mm -hmm. be tough, you gotta be tough in life. So. It's okay to get baby, but just know when you with hit on my family walking right past me. You gotta know, you know, you gotta know when it's time to be tough and when it's time to be soft. You know what I'm saying? Hockey so, baby. Q says, my, I'm sorry, go ahead. And with me, like I said, it's okay. If my kid is crying, I'm gonna I'm be like, hey man, you all right, man? Hey, come on, man, wipe it off. You know, then that's man, good. Man. That's my, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, but I ain't gonna say, man, get your ass up. Like, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, I ain't gonna do that, but I'm gonna say, hey man, get up, don't cry. Calm down, breathe, wipe it off. You good? I'm gonna let the mama hug him and shit. I ain't hugging him. I'm, I'm gonna hug my son, but I'm not gonna hug him and think whenever he hurt me, he, whenever he get hurt, dad gonna come hug me. No, I'm gonna come and look out for you, make sure you're straight, and make sure you're good. That's just like in life, when they get older and make decisions, I'm not gonna always be able to bail them out, but I'm always make sure they're good if that makes sense. Okay, I like that. I like that. Q goes, if I hug him and kiss his bruise, that's gonna be cool with you. Yes, I no. feel like. <laughs> Why do y'all be trying to make little boys grow as men? Like my dude, when he's three, kiss yeah. him on his bruise. Like he bruised his knee, it hurt. Kiss his bruise and let him know he's good. You want to know something? You, you want to know something? I never kissed my son before. <laughs> what? Never. Why? I kissed him. I I, I can tell you the last time I kissed my son was when he was born on his forehead. Why? Is that gay? No, I no, it's not gay. It's your son, <laughs> and I want I want to be mad at somebody for doing that. It just ain't me. It ain't me, but I'm gonna, show you, I'm gonna show you love in different ways. But I'm not gonna show you love in that way. But my daughter, I I, I kiss her on the forehead and stuff like that. So so, do you say physical affection just just for the girls? Is that what? No, that no. Means? I I hug my son all the time. I hug him all the time. Oh, you just won't kiss him. No. Oh, okay. All right, that's different. Okay, I feel like that's different. So who's gonna kiss his bruise on the football field? We ain't gonna go too long on this because y'all know we go we will go back. And oh yeah, we'll be yeah, we'll be on this <laughs> show. But no, just just know it ain't it ain't like I I think he's saying the same thing. It, it's that tough love just to get them ready for the real world. But it ain't that tough it ain't that tough love to be like get your ass up and shit wrong. It's that tough love to get up, wipe that sh wipe that shit off, and keep it moving. I can dig that. I think I think we all in, are in agreement of teaching our children to be resilient to not be so sensitive to every turn of rejection and every no. Oh, yeah, but sure. we should all also be on the same page to say that if our child is in pain, we need to address the situation. We need to address how they feel and move forward, not just yeah. brush it off like nothing happened. Yep, yep. I'm going to let my wife, my wife, my wife, you better kiss that bruise. I'm going to, hey, man, you you good. Tell me, as long man. as we're addressing, <laughs> it's just important to address how we're feeling. As long as we're addressing how we're feeling and, 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 and loving our kids, then we're fine. Okay. But... Damn, y'all done threw me off haste. I knew this shit was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> no. I can't stand y'all. Hey, that's um, how it is. So, you know, let's talk about this. I think a lot of people typically, um, you know, stay away from doing business with family. Yeah. And hold on, let's say, I do want to acknowledge this. I will say this. We're better fathers than the previous generations who were solely providers and showed no love. Um, yeah, for sure, yeah, because back in the day, that's when you better get your ass up and, and, and stop crying. But now I think we kind of like, all right, man, stop crying, wipe it off, breathe. You good, and ain't, you ain't as hurt as you think you are. But these niggas don't be providing though. So <laughs> these niggas be arguing about paying bills. I ain't saying all of them. I'm just saying that's like a big debate amongst niggas. Okay, man. generally yeah. speaking. So we we're better in different areas when we're weaker in others. You know, for sure, for sure. For sure. You know, we can yeah. debate better. Move yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny. Um, what was I just asking you? What you talking about, you talking about uh, business? Yeah, okay, there you go. So sorry, that was really tickling me. No, um, 
people stay away from doing business with family, but you're in business, your show is expanding, it's growing, and you and your uncle are close. What do you think is the key to maintaining a healthy, um, a healthy relationship when you're doing business with family? It's funny you say it. We were just talking about that on the podcast today because uh, my man who was on the show, his uh, his homeboy is his manager. And I was asking him, like, why do you think, like, like, like situations like that, whenever you see, like, a rapper who got, like, family or even a basketball player who got, like, family as, like, they representatives, like, it always mess up and never, you know what I'm saying, it never get right. Or, no, the money fuck things up. So yeah. I think the thing about, like, with Q, what do you say? We threw you. Oh, <laughs> I think the thing with Q is, with me and him, it'd be easy because the thing that I like about Q is that he gonna keep it real with me. I'm, you know, what I'm saying he gonna he gonna tell me why I need to hear it, even if I even if I don't want to hear it. You know, he said you pull your shit off the internet. You fucking... yeah, yeah, he got he got he, he got my junk hostage. But no, <laughs> me and him me and him could work because I know like I know what he do. He do a lot of shit. He edit my stuff. He 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 put it on all the platforms. He behind the camera when everything is going down, make sure everything is straight. And my only job is just to find the people and just ask questions. So with that being said, if things – well, when, when money started coming into play, they just got to know he got to come with me. You feel me? Right. Like, in some type of way. And if they don't and they give me some stupid-ass bag, I just know I, I know I got to take care of him regardless. So like it can work. Like, family and business can work as long as you got open communication. Like, if you got two people that's level-headed that can talk it, talk out their problems, you good. Now, if you got somebody that you've been arguing with before you was broke, when you was broke, <laughs> like, like... <laughs> Nigga, you will argue with the money. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work out. Like, me and my brother, we argue all the time, but we at work because at the end of the day, shit, I'm going to be here, nigga. <laughs> so, it can work. It just depends on the communication. Like, like a lot of things get broken down as far as like business because niggas be scared to say how they feel and then when the money get into play that's when y'all gotta talk how we gonna do this how we gonna split this and then that's when you can kind of like gauge and see like am i gonna keep fucking with this nigga or do i need to break you off and move on i like that so yeah it could work but you just gotta like i said you gotta be can't be scared to talk can't be scared to voice your opinions like if Q bullshit, I could think I could tell him, like, hey, man, you bullshit, and the camera fucked up. The light is all messed up. I can't even <laughs> I hear myself. You can definitely tell him. And then if <laughs> if I'm bullshit, he's going to be like, man, that was a, a, a lame-ass interview. Because it's been some interviews, and afterwards, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> but it was the people I had on. And he's like, dog, that shit was ass. <laughs> I like that. For sure. I so has I I like this I feel like it's safe to say that just because y'all well since the start of the podcast you guys have just gotten closer were you guys always super close I like to think y'all was especially if you no you yeah yeah, yeah but see me him I look at him more like an older brother because that's my mama baby brother but he only seven years older than me right so it's like I never call him uncle because he's too young <laughs> you know what I'm saying but no he was like he was like the person that you know what I'm saying you want to hang with but when I was like eleven. He had tell me to get the hell on. I couldn't hang with him or nothing. So when I become of age, like, 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 that's the first person that you know, what I'm saying I call, like, hey, let's kick it, let's do this, let's do that. Like, when I moved to Texas, like, it was kind of weird, not you know, what I'm saying being able to go to his crib and kick it, or vice versa. And when I came back to Detroit, he moved to Colorado. So it's like my, I think my family in a whole don't function right without him. Aww. No, it's it, no real talk. He know it when he moved to Colorado. It's like niggas wasn't even his homies. His homies don't know. It's like he a general of every fucking thing. Like, like don't nobody move until this nigga do something. The family wasn't getting together. And one time I had to call him out. Like, hold on, just because this nigga ain't here don't mean we can't kick it. <laughs> like, like his ass is staying in Colorado in the mountains. We can still kick it. Uh, but, I feel oh, like you get, I know you get roses on your show and you get flowers. I feel like you getting his flowers right now. But no, yo, but I always like we always like I always kicked it with him. Like, like clubbing, hanging out, you know, he old, you know, so whenever I could, like, we always fuck with him, we always kick it with him, me and my little brother always kick it with him and stuff, like, he the one person who didn't, like, like, fake it, a lot of niggas say when you, when you lose a parent, oh, I'm a, I'm a, I got your back, but then they disappear, it's, it's always right. been love, it's always been, like, that nigga always fuck with us. Aww. Yeah. I don't want, ain't no all shit. <laughs> <laughs> But no, he, you know, say you just get, you just get cool people around. You get, you be lucky to get cool family members and shit like that. So he, he, one of a few cool family members I got. 
Oh, that's solid. Q, you, you getting some roses. You getting your flowers. Yeah. Shaw, really showing you some love right now. And everybody know how him going to cry. No? <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. I ain't crying. Shit, I go to the shower before I do that. <laughs> <laughs> if was I'm my kids the you know what? Here you go. Didn't you say you had somewhere to go? Man. Um, I like this. That's yeah. dope. I, I, that was really touching to me, y'all. I really, I, I think that you don't get a lot of cool as family members. No, you I don't. Like hell typically, no. I know some people don't get along with the people that their mama gave birth to, but like for the most part, me and my siblings are, especially really my mama kids. I'm close to my dad's children too, but yeah. for sure, my mom's kids like were real close knit, real tight. So it's, I, I, I always feel when people be like, I fuck with my cousin or me and my brother super close. I always love to hear that. Oh yeah, yeah, and my I little brother. Know, I hate my little brother, but I love my little brother. Like we 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 talk every single day. He get on my nerves every day, but that's my dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like my mom always said, look out for your brother. And and she yeah. always tell, she always said, homie, you better listen to your brother. So we super tight. We argue all the time about everything. We like night and day, but we super tight, super cool. I was just with him not too long ago, dropping him off from, you know what I'm saying, doing a podcast with Q and shit. So yeah, those those two people is the people and my auntie Candy. Those like three people I kick with on the all day, all day, every day. That's dope. Yeah. Are you? I that that's like a dope ass family chemistry. Are you trying to make sure your kids have that too? Is that the case? Like if your brothers have kids, like make sure that they kick it, that you're tight oh, yeah. with your family. Now my, my my older son is way older than his siblings because he probably, right. Yeah. But I always tell my if some if something go down happen to me, like make sure you look out for your you know what I'm saying look out for your brothers and sisters and shit and help out. However you can. I don't feel like you obligated to be their father, but help out like when you can. Like and like that. I said, and then like yeah, you got to cause my family's small. Like a lot of people passed away that was important. So now the little people that we got, you gotta make sure you keep that shit close. So whenever my kids have kids, they gotta make sure that family structure is as A one. I like that. Yeah, I like gonna be, that. This is gonna be your best interview ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, like this. Somebody get him, bro. <laughs> yeah. Hey, like no. I said, I'd be like, all right, I got to make sure when I come on somebody's stuff, they'd be like, damn, I remember him. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember him because he swear, you know, I mean, it's going to be straight. I ain't saying it's all that. It's Man, all right. You funny. You crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And I'm, I love, I think we hit on everybody that, um, that's important to you. I know we talked about Q. We talked about you being introduced to fatherhood. Um, Black love, you're married, Shy. You recently yeah. got married, what, last year or that was that this year? Yeah, last yeah. Year? Yeah, we got married, uh, July, it'll be a year, July 10th. Okay. Oh, we, got married, we, married on, we got married on, we got married on my mama's birthday. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doing what, what, is, what is marriage like? What is, what is that married life like? Let me see, make sure I don't say the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it's cool, it's cool. I, I, I would say, it's still the same because I feel like we were still kind of like, I don't know. It felt like we was married even when we wasn't married. You feel me? Like I, I, I always said like I was in two previous relationships that, that didn't work out, of course. But I said like if I ever got to another relationship, it'd be, it'd be real. Like it got to be something for real. Like I don't want to bring my son and be like, all right, he messed with this woman, this woman, that woman. You know right. what I mean? So when I got with her, like it's just like it clicked. Like, like she wasn't, I said, the, the the two females I was with, I'm not gonna say anything bad about them, but I wanted them to kind of change their ways from how they were. And you can't change somebody; they are gonna be how they are. You know what I'm saying? Right. But with, but with her, she was like, she was how I wanted my future wife to be. Like she wasn't like out there in the streets hanging out all the time. She was a homebody like me. Like I like to chill at the crib. Like that's my thing. I love chilling at the crib, having people coming over. So she was a homebody. She was chill. She was a caring person, like she loved her family and shit like that, and and she had men a man around her life, so she knew, like, she got her stepdad and she got her real dad. She got her uncles, you know what I'm saying? She got men around that she see, a, a example of a man. So like me, me and her, I say it was more of a blessing than anything because like she gave me an added family that I kind of lost with losing my mom and my pops and stuff like that. Yeah. So her mom and her her stepdad became like my mom and pops. You know what I'm saying? Like. Her her sisters became like my sisters because I don't have sisters. You feel me? So it wasn't just her. It was like everything about her and around her. Ooh. So, <laughs> so no, but yeah, but with her, like it's like it's like damn, like she cool. Like 
And it wasn't about, oh, you got the, the, the you got this, you got that. Like, a lot of times we chase girls for, oh, I got the biggest ass, the, the best face, the, she's smart. Like, you're not going to get that. You got to get somebody that kind of, like, compliments you and how you are and shit. A lot of times a dude will chase the wrong chick, and you thinking that, oh, she bad, but she out here talking to Craig, Bill, Will, like, but you got bad chicks. That's that's fucking over your dumb ass whenever you you know what I'm saying make a move, but you gotta get somebody who can compliment you and just know like all right I ain't gonna fuck this up. This somebody who I've been wanting to be with, you know what I'm saying, and then we gonna rock. I like this. Yeah. Damn, I love that. And I, you, I ten years ago I would be like I never get married. Hell no, I'm a I'm a, I'm a player. <laughs> oh but god, you gonna try the bitches? First off, play on the play. What made you? What I mean, I, you I feel like everything you said is what you know, you took into consideration when you decided to propose, but what about her really changed your views on marriage? Because you said you wanted to be a player in your life. You wanna go get married? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did want to be a player though. I was a bad player too. <laughs> I was a bad player. Like I was a, I was a, I was a fake player. You know what made me wanna um what made me change that was just like I don't know, she was kinda like she was kinda like she was she was kinda like your mom my mom. Cause like they say, a lot of times you fall in love with the person that resembles your mom and shit. So it's like she didn't have to do no extra stuff for nothing like that. She was like, it was cool just being her. You know what I'm saying? She, my wife is lame, but she ain't lame. But she whack. I'm whack. We just some square. <laughs> we some square people, like, and we click. We click super. You know, we click. We click real good. And I started noticing like her, her, her cousin married. Like people we was hanging around we was married, but we wasn't. And I started to know that she didn't want to do things with her married people because we was in there like, hey, this is my boyfriend. Hey, this is my girlfriend. You know, it was starting to get played out. We was together for so long, and we kind of knew what it was. So it was like, all right, that's, we, I got to stop playing around before, you know what I'm saying, it'd be too late. Oh, snap. Yeah, so it was uh, like, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it, it was all good, though. She she cool peoples. <laughs> I, lo I love to, I love to hear that. And I love, I know that um, I was talking to you probably like a couple of weeks ago and you posted on there and you said, you posted on Facebook and just said that ever since you came around, everything's just been a blessing. And oh, because yeah. of her, you've been, you've been able to do things that you always wanted to do. Yeah. And I think that you don't, you don't, I just feel like people get married and they don't talk about it, especially black people. Yeah. White people talk about being married all the time. Oh, me and sure. Bill, we travel. Yeah. We travel that shit all the day long. All day long. Niggas get married and they act like they didn't fucking caught a disease they can't get rid of. Or something. Yeah, yeah. And this bitch don't do this, she do For that. For sure. Hell and yeah. And it's like, it's, it's, still, it's still stuff we working on, but that's that was another thing that I, I know is like, like that's when I started really believing, like, damn, like, energy, positive people uh, bring things to you that, you know what I'm saying, you like, damn, I ain't, I ain't see that shit coming. My brother, I always say my big brother was like, before I moved from Texas back to Detroit, he was like, dog, you got to get rid of the people who ain't doing nothing for you in, your, in life. Like, not necessarily, like, handing you anything, but if they don't have anything positive going on with their life, usually you're going to fall into that same road. Yeah. So, like, once I changed that up and stuff like that and, and got with her, and I started, like, always wanted to be some way, somehow into basketball. Her job was hiring for a basketball coach. She like, you should apply for it. I'm like, I don't know. I did it. I fell in love with coaching. You know what I'm saying? With the podcast stuff that came, that came and it just started blowing up. I um with jobs, I made my most money as far as working. Once I got with her, it's like things started coming and was start and I was starting to like, you know what I'm saying, feed off of it and things just started happening. And then one thing, like this is gonna be a last tearjerker, but <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to know how it was to have like a, a father that you can kick it with. Cause like I said, my dad passed away at 12, 13. So I'm like, dang, I never knew how it feel to be like just to call a dude who like a father, like a real father that you could have a drink with, talk shit with, watch the game with. So when her stepdad came in around, she like, you gonna love my stepdad. I'm like, yeah, right. How you know? Well, I tell you, I talk to this nigga every single day. Like every day I talk to this fool. So he kind of like that father that I'm always like thinking like, damn, it'd be cool to have a dad that I can kick it with. And you got her dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He a, he a cool dude. He all right. <laughs> Y'all hear him, y'all he don't never want to get to. He always want to down play it. That is, you know what? Yeah. I think I don't really got no more questions because I feel like that was it. Yeah. I, don't, I love, I just, yo, I feel this right here. <laughs> in my heart. 
Okay, I feel I love that because I just feel like we got to do a better job of just showing love to one another and talking about the love that we have and the good things that come out of marriage. Niggas will talk about all day. Oh, uh, what they say? That paper don't mean shit. But niggas get up and bust their ass day in and day out for some money. But you can't tell them niggas money don't mean nothing. Hell yeah, for sure. That, no, that's, that's real. That's real right there. For real, for real. They would do that all day. And it's like, man, beautiful things happen in marriages. Yeah, and then like beautiful. I said, you get older, I'll be, I got, my birthday is Monday. I'll be 35 years old. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, and damn, you old boy. You <laughs> Man, whatever. Damn. <laughs> I am. I'm getting there. I'm getting there for real. You 35? So no, you literally, what do you have? Eight years on me? Shy, you got eight years dang, on me. Hey, you, uh, you what, 27? Mm -hmm. dang. I just got 27 at the end of May. Yeah, I'm an old head then compared to you then, I guess. You old as fuck. You yes. old. You old. It's cool. Oh, it's you cool. um. You got your birthday's the first day of summer. Yep, yep, yep. Borderline Gemini Cancer. My mother's birthday is June twenty first. Oh, for real? Oh, she a, she a dope person there. <laughs> uh, she all right. Yeah, but no, no. So like, once you get older, it's like, I mean, what you doing? Shout out to my boy Al. He married too, man. What up, though, dog? Hey. But, but yeah, it's like it's like once you get older, what you doing? Like, I got friends. I got people. You know, what I'm saying you still chasing like the club life. You know, what I'm saying how many females can you get? Like after a while. That shit get you get tired. That don't like that get played out. You know what I'm saying? It's cool if you in the dating process you're doing that, but after a while, it's like, dog, if you got something, man, you better go ahead and, and grab it up because somebody else uh, grabbed her up for real. I love it. All right, so then I I'm big on black love. Okay, so I want two things from you. I got two. I want three things from you. What up? One tip for somebody that's starting a podcast. One. What's your best piece of advice for them? Start that shit. Just start. I don't give a fuck if you on the phone. Like I said, Q was doing that shit on a BlackBerry. <laughs> he was doing that shit on a BlackBerry. So if you got started on the phone, start that junk. Shout out to Seabree. You see, she has she drop out short little seven, eight minute yep. clips. So just start it. Like it's never gonna be a right time to start something. My man said that today on the show. It's never gonna be a right time to start. So if you got something you want to do, just start it. Especially with yep. the podcast, just do it. Like just do it. See where it's at and get better. Yeah. And I want to piggyback off that. I used to work for QL, um, and the motherfucker's like a cult. But, yeah. you know, Dan Gilbert is obviously a billionaire for a reason. That nigga knows something. And he has these things called isms. And usually when people start off something, they don't get a lot of views. You probably get, you might get none. Yeah. And one of the isms that he has is that numbers do not lead, they follow. So yeah. if you put that work in, those numbers are going to come behind it. And you, you know, with it. and you know, another thing, shout out to um, the, Connected experience, AJSJ. They told me something that made sense. Just like what me and you are doing is perfect because if you don't get views, we're not doing weekly based conversations. So it's never going to get dated. So they can always go back and watch this no matter how many years. And it's still going to feel like, you know what I'm saying? It's still going to feel good to watch in opposed to having a weekly show where you talk about weekly topics. Niggas ain't going to want to go back and watch that a month, you know what I'm saying? A month from now. You don't want to hear about what T.I. and Tony was doing with other couples and other, yeah you know what i'm saying because it's gonna be yeah. dated but when you interviewing somebody you can always go back and watch that anytime yeah i like that and you know what that's funny you said that that's funny you said that because i was really thinking i was really thinking about when i was restructuring the show i didn't want to continue to do i like doing interviews but i didn't want to continue to do them the way i was doing them yeah. or at least talking about the things i was talking about because it wasn't natural to me and it was so hard to be consistent with some shit that i really didn't get that many fucks about oh, yeah. so when i really changed to fit to talk about what the fuck i wanted to talk about and find people that want to talk about what the fuck i want to talk about yeah. even if they have opposing views to it it just became so much easier yeah that, yeah absolutely right talk about, right. i find some weekly to talk about with something that's that matters not yeah. that bullshit nobody give a fuck about tiana tiny yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, people gonna come back and watch it because once they get a hold to you, like, damn, this, 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 uh, this, her show, her show, cold, and then they go back and start listening to conversations. They gonna fuck with it. Somebody said this fire. Thank you, thank you. Say shout, shout versus everybody. A one live podcast at marriage is the best decision I made in a long time. I yeah. love to hear. It. I am oh, so yeah. here for it. Yeah, but um, on that tip, yeah, just start. If you got a podcast, you want to do it, just do it. If it, if it's ass, just get better. If it don't get better, stop. <laughs> <laughs> and that's honest that is so honest because niggas never want to tell nobody they ask bro that shit garbage it fucking sucks yes, and man. you yeah you I need those people that. you need those people for real you do you really do that shit ass yeah. alright so number two then I need 
and give me one good piece of dating advice for a young man that, you know, wants to get married, but, you know, he just still kind of running, you know, dating, trying to see what's one good piece of dating advice uh, if he really wants to get married. One piece of dating advice? Yeah, a good one. Damn. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm trash at, 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 the, at the date stuff. For real, I'm putting something together right now for my wife, and I had to get some advice from, from Q-Ass. I'm tired of giving that nigga shout-outs, but... <laughs> Uh, my one dating advice is don't 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 be too relaxed like for lack of a bad word don't just don't keep everything the same every day like switch it up you know what I'm saying take her out don't just take her to the movies and out to eat every time like like just change change it up because you're gonna fall into a routine and then when you fall into a routine that's when niggas start cheating Ooh. so yeah that, that came out to my yeah freestyle <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like yeah, like surprise her. You sometimes switch it up. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, that's why I'm goofy. I try to make her laugh all the time. If I can make you laugh, then you know what I'm saying? That's a good thing. And, and we around each other every single damn day. So yeah, I say just don't don't fall into a routine in a relationship. And that's how your ass uh, uh, uh get messed over and she mess with Craig because Craig over there <laughs> at the job and he over there doing all type of stuff to get her laughing and 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 telling her what he can do and. And then she fall for credit. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, advice, no matter what communication is key. Communication for sure, key. Oh, yeah. I like that. Is definitely key, because you got to, hey, if, you don't, if, if something you don't like, you got to tell them, like, no matter if they funds get hurt or not. Yeah. But yeah I like that. Don't fall into no routine, though. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I love that. All right. And then, um, I, I, like, I like every, I love everything about, the getting started process, the first time you did something, what it was like, um, that I love that moment. I love always going back to that because it says a lot about a person, especially yeah. compared to where they are now. Not even your second episode, not your third, your very first one. Yeah. I always love that. So in honor of your very first episode, in honor of our anniversary episode, um, I need three foods that you like. <laughs> and I'm going to go first. since that's, I, I've learned that from you, that if you ask somebody to get something, you like, I'll go first. Yeah. Get them time. Need to get this shit together. For that's sure, that's sure. what I'm watching you do. I'll do my favorite three foods. They weird right now. Mine's is going to be cabbage. Cabbage good as hell. Yeah, I'm, fuck, I'm fucking up some cabbage. I'm going to make some tonight. So I'm going to go cabbage. I'm fucking up some salmon. And I don't know. I've been feeling, um, I want some corned beef. So I'm going cabbage. Salmon and some corned beef. Those are my top three foods right now. Yeah, when you made that cabbage, I did some junk when we was on keto because I ain't got fat since our last interview. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but if you got some cabbage and some like, and some sausage, like some acrid sausage, and chop that boy up and put him in there, that's gonna be good as hell. That's like some. I got some. I just bought some too. I'm, I'm gonna do that. That's some keto junk right there. But no, my top three is any pizza, frozen pizza, whatever. I don't give a damn. Oh. Um, lunchable <laughs> pizza. Any pizza. So pizza <laughs> is always number one. Number two is anything to do with shrimp. If it's shrimp Alfredo, fried shrimp, um, uh, uh, okay. anything shrimp. Pizza shrimp. And then the last one would be, I got to go with uh, wings, chicken wings. All right. It's a split between like chicken wings. wings and burgers. Wait, where you, where you like wings from? You got a favorite wing spot? Uh, it was this place called Hooks on the west side. I'm an east sider, but since I'm on the west side now, it's a place called Captain Hooks on Seven Mile, Wyoming. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I fuck with they say wings. They say wings be they say. The I don't even think I've ever been to they say. They say what? Yeah, they black home. Y'all go support them. Oh yeah, I'm going to Joseph Campo. But, um, but my favorite wings is is, is shells. Shelly shells wings. That's my uh my mother in law wings. Really? <laughs> Shot. Tell me some Shelly shit. Bye. The, Bye. The most good. Um, let me see. What else I want to know? Mm -hmm. What else I want to know? I don't think I got anything else I want to know. I feel like this is a very thorough interview. Yeah, all right. I ask you this. What's, uh, what's, since the anniversary of our interview, what's one thing you remember? Like, did you did you go into the interview like, damn, I want to do this shit, and then you had a good time? Like, what's one thing you remember about the interview that you was like, that this was dope? Um, a couple things. I, I got like two. No, and I, I actually, first of all, I like talking. That's why I do this shit. So I'm always down to fucking share what I think about some shit. For sure. Um, so no, I definitely, like I told you, I really, I felt one because you're a black man, you have a black business. I felt like 
you know, I was really disappointed in myself for not being on point and making sure that I show up on time for your thing. Because I'm not trying to say I, I be shitty as fuck with white businesses, but when it comes to black businesses, I already know we give each other a hard time. So when it comes to me, I always try to make sure that I do my part and if I try to go above and beyond when it comes to that. Sure. So I thought I was really upset that I wasn't on time. Yeah. I'm like, damn, I wasted his time. Tomorrow, you you, you, you was serious. good though, because you had you told me what happened and John like that. I had people that knew the time, knew what was going on, and was still hella late. Or yeah. or just don't show up at all and then hit me like, oh my bad, can we reschedule? Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, we you and me talked about that. We talked about that. So I felt bad. That was like the first thing. Um, the, the second thing that I really liked about the interview, uh, I think you, I think you did ask me to give flowers to somebody. I don't know how I gave my flowers. To you me. give it to your uncle Wayne. Oh yeah, that's my dog. See, I, I remember oh, every, I remember dog. everything. <laughs> that is my dog. Yeah, and that's what you said. That was your exact words. That's my dog. That <laughs> is my dog, Uncle Wayne. Yeah, like. I hate to always take think about death, but just death just is so big on my mother's side that I'm not new to it. Yeah. So I always think that <clears throat> if my uncle Wayne dies, I'm gonna be sick as fuck about it. Like yeah. some niggas die, you be like, they don't be sad if she gotta die. But if my uncle Wayne die, yeah. he's gonna be a sad. This nigga gonna be hurt for a man. minute. Man, so, yeah, for that's sure, my dog. I remember that, John. Yeah, man. Hey, <laughs> uncle Wayne, you gotta stay with us, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stay right here, bro. I love my uncle Wayne. Let's see, y'all got tears in my eyes because I'm for real. Like, man, please don't take my dog. I love him. And then the third thing, I'm sorry. Wait, you want to go ahead? Go ahead, go ahead. You said the third thing I really like. Like I said, that you just did research. Like, it felt, it felt, it felt good to come in and somebody know some stuff about you that you ain't said. Yeah. I really, I don't know, really. I'm, I don't know why I'm having a, a poor time explaining that, but it felt good to be like, yo, I know this is this is that about you and incorporate that into the interview and I'm like yo that's dope no because you're gonna make that's somebody dope. you're gonna make somebody feel good because like my thing mm -hmm. is like I haven't uh you know you, you I haven't interviewed nobody like Big Sean or somebody like that you know what I'm saying if it happened it happened if it don't it don't because I feel like the people I'm interviewing like yourself included I feel like y'all all got the chance to blow up and stuff like that so I try yeah. to make sure I pick my people carefully but my thing is uh damn what was I saying what was I getting <laughs> Oh, that made somebody feel good. Like when you know, if you, because that day you might have came in not, you know what I'm saying, feeling the best, but if somebody could tell you something about yourself and what you got going on, it can give you, you know what I'm saying, motivation and keep going with what you got. Yeah. That's, that, those are definitely, those, those are two big things that yeah. giving the flowers, I thought that was super dope. Yeah. Um, And then definitely being like, you know, I did some research on your XYZ and I'm like, yo, that's, that's dope. Like that was, and I've never been interviewed before. Yeah. So to get so for my first experience, it's like yo, it's like set the bar. Like, and I really like this. So I yeah. not only do I want to have this experience every time, if not better, I want to return that experience. Yeah, for sure. Um, you got to, you got to, and like I said, it just made people feel good, and then make it seem like I'm not wasting your time because I don't want to just be like come in for an interview just to better my platform. I want to actually tell you that I've been fucking with what you got going on. I studied yeah. it before you came on because I don't want to get to a point that you on the show and you ask me a question about something like say an album that came out and I can't name shit about it. So it's yeah. like, dog, why you have me on the show if you don't know nothing about me? Exactly. You know what yeah, saying? and I think, and and that just goes back to the character of people. Why are you really doing what you're doing? Yeah. Because I feel like it, the, the minute that shit looks fake, niggas gonna pick up on it yeah. and then you gonna have to deal with that. Yeah. But when it's genuine, when it's real, when somebody really love what they do, it's going to just show. It's, not, it's going to be so evident. So now, One thing I want to ask you, though, before I get off is, like, when you, when you, how do you feel about motherfucking your guests? Like, like, do you ask, at the one time of asking somebody something and they kind of, like, play you, do you ask again, give them another chance, or you just be off of it? You know what? I had two people that I wanted to interview. I'm not even going to say names. Um, and they're bigger now in the city. One I actually had, we were texting back and forth, setting the date and everything. Yeah. The dog never showed up. Yeah. And then I had another guy that I went to school with and I was going to do this interview. And he also never showed up. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? Um, if they don't show up, I, I don't. I At first I did say, I'm like, well, I took that shit personal. I'm like, damn, I think you ain't want to do the show. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? At the end of the day, I can say I did what I was supposed to do. I reached out to you. I was genuine. I was authentic. And if you don't return the favor, then it is what it is. Yeah. I just did be a good person. And I felt like you had something to offer. I had something to offer you. So, yeah. I just, you know, you, you got to take an L. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's right. Like, I, I asked you once. If you kind of, like, spin me, I might, I might ask again. But I'm not going to do it no more in two times because I'm starting to feel like I'm a female. <laughs> what? 
What? <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I'm not about to sit here and chase you down like 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 uh, like like there are they are a female I'm not chasing you down you gonna you gonna see me eventually you gonna feel like damn I said went on there when you know what I'm saying I had the opportunity but a lot yeah. of times people look at platforms like we was talking about who 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 I feel like I was buried in as far as like the podcast space a lot of times I ain't seen artists that I ain't reached out to they are rushed to another show just because they got so many so many views some you know what I'm saying artists everybody ain't been on there. But they're not giving that person a chance to really fuck with what they do, fuck with yep. them, and gonna have a good ass conversation like you on this. Yeah, show. yeah, it's dry as hell. But you just on this platform just because it got a name and yeah. got so many, you know, what I'm saying followers instead of a platform that you can have a good time and and shit, enjoy yourself. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. And I think I th and I think when people really start and investigate what I feel like when you're an artist or any type of creative when you start really investigating where you're gonna spend your time when you do these interviews because they do these motherfuckers galore you do it you get so routine to it that you just be like, all right whatever I'm gonna do it but if they start really investing time in it yeah. I feel like they will probably spend a lot more time on platforms that have less of but, followers for sure, for sure. Can I before I, more organic and natural before I even ask you to come on shout out to my daughter people son I've been knowing him since I was in ninth grade but, oh, that's funny. I met him a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, that's my dog. We went to uh, we went to uh, Gross Point North together, high school. He was um your second interview, yep. your second or your third interview. Yep, yep, yep. That's my. So what my plan was to do this: have people that I knew personally that was doing something come on the show. So yeah. then when I asked, my bad, when I had people that I don't don't really know, they see I got a resume full of like, all right, he and did like seven interviews. Like I had him, I had my boy Sean Streets, I had my boy Cheese. I had Coach Brooks, like those people right there I already knew I had a relationship with. So I hey man, y'all wanna come on the show, let's talk shit. And then right from there, that's when I started having people I didn't know and that's when it got scary. Like before every show, even when you was there, like I'm nervous until we started talking. Yeah. But it's it was it's it's all good, it's been all love for everybody. And I just feel like what well, we just did episode seventy two. I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do special for my hundred. I know my hundred gonna be sometime next year probably and i gotta do something special i don't know if i'm gonna like i don't know what i want to do i want to do it where we be like at a hall and i just bring back like my top 15 people and we just talk shit i know i better be in that motherfucker that's yeah. all i'm saying i don't yeah, know come, what the fuck he's talking hey, hey, come, through, come through you got to make sure make sure a baby kareem somewhere and stuff and get out <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying have some have, have a good time some food drinks and just talk shit and have, a, have an audience or whatever I like that. That's funny you said that. That is so funny you said that. And I and I the more the more I meet people that are in this space, the more I realize great minds do think alike. Because that's more like a live event. And I, I was literally thinking like, damn, what I I want to do. We'll we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Maybe we're still in ideas and shit. Oh yeah, for sure. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. That's a fact. We'll talk about that later. That's a fact. I know, I know. Oh wait, I'll ask that. Have you had someone? that's reached out to you for advice on how to do their podcast and then you see them copying some shit that you've done. Have you ever had that? I ain't had nobody do it like that, but I I believe I could be wrong. <laughs> I, I I recorded this junk and I sent it to Q and like, dog, I think they still in how I said, how I'm, I'm asking my questions because this particular podcast had hit me and wanted to be on the show, but I wasn't really feeling the show. Like I, and so then once I, for some reason, I just clicked on it and was looking at the show, and he was like, he asked the question exactly how I would ask it. Like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, I just put two and two together. Like, damn, y'all just hit me up last week. And now... Oh, damn. Yeah, and now y'all asking a question like that. But that's cool. You're going to get that. Once that happened, you know what I'm saying, that's how you know you're blowing up. That's why whenever I steal anything, I pay homage. Like, when I do the the um top three, I stole that from Snoop Dogg. You know what I'm saying? Oh, really? At the end, Snoop Dogg used to have a show called GGN, and it was cool how he used to always ask top three. And I'm like, damn, if I ever have a show, I'm going to do that. And I did. And one other thing about podcasting, I used to interview myself like I was on one system part when I was in high school. Really? <laughs> I used to act like I was free and AJ interviewing myself and shit. That's crazy. <laughs> I, yo, I'm not even trying to be weird or nothing. But I low key did used to be in my room answering questions like people was asking me questions. For sure. No, I'm not. I wouldn't even lie to y'all. Yeah, okay. That's funny you said that. Yeah. So like I said, like I said, it was all, it was all. You know, I've been, I've been knowing what I wanted to do, but just didn't know I was gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? If that made sense. 
I like that. I like that. Yeah. I like that. This was fun. I had fun. For sure. For sure. Your best your best uh interviewee ever. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I ain't gonna I mean, you know that. Get a little funny or something. I don't know. You silly. You silly. No, for sure. We definitely got to have a, a, a sit down. You got to come back on the show. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but if we, 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 we get cracking one of these days. I'm down. All right. Well, before we go, you got to tell people where they can find you. Oh, uh, shout out versus everybody underscore podcast. Go on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? E-Block Podcast Network. You can go ahead and get all of our stuff. You got me. You got Q. They show called The Wake and Bake Show. My brother got a weed show called The Cannabis Analyst. That's that's a dope. I like that. That's a dope show. And then you got the bourbon show. That's the uh, BBW Beers Bourbon Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he did that on purpose. That's yeah, BBW. And then like I said, y'all can get me on Facebook. You know, what I'm saying if you want to just, I don't talk about too much shit on there, but you know, my government Rashad Sterling on Facebook. <laughs> and if you want to listen to some music, I'm I'm not the best, but I, I think I'm pretty good. You know, what I'm saying. You can go ahead, Chavis A by on SoundCloud, and there's everything on pop up. I like that. Um, I guess I'm gonna do it this way. Um, you guys find me, follow me on every platform as well, Sherelle Carter. Um, I lie. You can find Let's Talk the Show on every platform. You name it, we got it. Twitch, Twitter, uh, whatever. Or you can find me personally on social media at Miss Carter underscore One X by my government, Sherelle Carter. Um. I want to thank you sure. for an amazing episode. I had so much fun. Oh, yeah. I know I was going to have fun laughing with you because that's just how it goes. For sure, for sure. Um, like I said, my bad, I can't do it on that Tuesday we talked about, but I'll be coaching on Tuesday. So. No, nah, it's cool. You know what? I think it all worked out for the best because I got to add a show. I got to test some new shit out, see how it works. Sure. And I still got to get you in so we could do our anniversary episode. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I had, what was I about to ask you? Oh, so you guys know that we got to go out the same way we came in. Shad, you got to give us something that you're grateful for. All right, well, I said my mom's, so I'm just going to be, I'm, I'm grateful for, 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 for young life, kids, because me coaching and stuff like that, my kids, like, they just bring that energy, you know what I'm saying? And they, they, once, once you got a kid that look up to you that's not your kid, you're like, damn, I'm doing something right. I like that. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to the kids that's doing something. I know it's graduation time. Go ahead, have fun, be wild, but shit, pay attention. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I love that. For sure. I really love that. Um, what am I grateful for? Um, I am grateful. Um, I, I hate to keep repeating my grace. I'm just grateful for another day to get oh, yeah. back up and try it again. Hell yeah. Like I fucked up yesterday. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a little bit better today. And I'm just thankful God keep giving me chance after chance. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, yeah, <laughs> like, up. Some people in worse situations, so you guys to be thankful for a little bit. Got. Got to. I'm super grateful to be here. Um, but as always, like I said, so I had so much fun. It's sure. so fun. I appreciate Maybe it. You guys yeah. go. You said what? So far. I ain't saying this is because we on the live. This is my best interview so far as far as somebody interviewing hey. me. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's how I like. <laughs> Yeah, you had you had you had everything together, so it was dope. I love it. And I did, I didn't have nothing prepared. This was all off the head. Oh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can do a show like that without looking at my phone and shit. <laughs> I have I don't, and that's what that's another thing. I just stopped I just stopped making questions. I just I want it to be a natural conversation. I'm gonna have a natural conversation. And if I can't do it, then I can't do it. But for sure. I've been winging it and it's been working, so yeah, I'm fucking with it. Hey, might as well keep it going, shit. Right? Yeah. If broke, don't fix it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Shy, for coming on. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the honesty and the vulnerability. Thank you for your platform because that's how we got here because of you. For sure. Um, I wish you nothing but the best. I don't even have to wish you that because I know your show going to be big. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Both, both, both shows, both shows going to be good. Y'all hear it? Sure. Um, and make sure y'all show him some love. Go follow him. Go listen to an episode. Check out his music. Um, and I think that's about it, everybody. Thank you guys to my amazing audience for tuning in. You guys are always a fucking maze, boss. Make sure you guys come back and kick it with me next Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Instagram Live. Um, I think that's it. My name is Sherelle Carter, you guys. I'm the host of Let's Talk the Show, and this ain't a podcast. I see y'all. Peace out. Peace out.